ठीक है ठीक है ओके विल स्टार्ट नाउ द पोर्शन इज एपिडेमोलॉजी एंड टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट ऑफ द एपिडेमोलॉजी सो द द वर्ड यू एज यू यू आर सीइंग हियर एपिडेमोलॉजी इट हैज बीन डिराइव्ड फ्रॉम अ ग्रीक अ ग्रीक वर्ड द वर्ड इज एपी डेमियो डेमो एंड लॉजी दे आर दीज आर द थ्री ग्रीक वर्ड्स from where the term epidemiology has been derived as you all know that ap means upon demo means people and logi means study so anything that we study on a population or a people group of people or in a population is called epidemiology if we study the pattern of a disease or the occurrence of a disease on a population or in a herd it is called the epidemiology of a particular disease so epidemiology in as such is a general terminology that has been used for different purposes if we do a study the disease occurrence in a population it is called disease epidemiology if we study something else in a population it is called uh, the epidemiology of that particular thing so uh, uh, first of all what is the basis of epidemiology so basically the purpose of epidemiology in our perspective is to study or is to investigate the disease in a population if we know the epidemiology of a disease that means if we know how the disease is proceeding in a population what is the status of a disease in a population we can have different control strategy so that's why the epidemiology has become very very important in the present scenario if you want to have any control strategy to develop we must know the epidemiology of the disease that is how it is occurring in the population what is the source of that disease how it is proceeding moving into the population how is it important economically and uh, and uh, uh, the very important is how it is spreading in the population do we need immediate control measure do we need uh some uh, preventive measure to to control the disease or to contain the disease that is all covered by epidemiology if we know the epidemiology of the disease we can do all the things the very common the very uh recent example you can have the covid 19 covid 19 as you all know this is a corona virus disease that has been occurring in the population globally globally means it is now a pandemic that is all the population throughout the world has suffered with this disease and the problem with this disease is that we do not know the exact epidemiology of that particular virus it is still under study so as soon as we know the detail epidemiology of this disease we can go for its control strategy in a better way that's why uh, if you, you 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 might have heard the different terminologies like pandemic epidemic host reservoir transmission spread communicable disease contagious disease all these terms they are all related to the epidemiology of a particular disease that all we are experiencing now due to covid virus whatever theory you have heard anywhere you have learned everywhere all all are coming in this particular situation that's why the epidemiology has become very very important in the current scenario so coming to the uh, next uh, uh, slide i'm just uh, sharing if you see the definition of epidemiology one more thing i would like to uh, um, say that uh, epidemiology this this particular term is used for the study of disease in a population the population is of human population so the term epidemiology used if you study the pattern of disease in a human population this is called epidemiology and the same thing if you perform in animal population it is called epizootiology zootio means zoo it means animal population so anything that we study in an animal population it is called epizootiology otherwise in regular terms we use the term epidemiology this has been used mainly for the human population but for the convenience of Uh, people and public to understand we use these terms regularly on regular basis we usually we use the term epidemiology to understand the the 
pattern of the disease, the occurrence of disease in a population. Similarly, uh, you might have heard or we will discuss about the epidemic, what is epidemic, what is pandemic, what is endemic. So similarly, in, in, in case of human population, we use the term epidemic. And for the same thing to observe in animal population, we use the term episodic. So epidemic means, uh, you might have heard about the epidemic of a particular disease. Initially, this COVID, COVID was epidemic in China. What does it mean? It means this, this disease was spreading on a large scale at a particular time, at a particular place. So initially it was epidemic in China because it was reported in the China itself. By the time passes, it started occurring throughout the world. Globally, the episodes of this COVID-19 was reported. That's why the WHO has declared it as pandemic. So what it means, pandemic? Pandemic means the occurrence of disease throughout the world. All the country in the world, they got affected with a particular disease. So such situation is called pandemic. It means the disease is occurring in the whole population, human population of the world. Similarly, the panzootic or epizootic. Epizootic means occurrence of a particular disease in a place on large scale in animal population. That is called epizootic. And panzootic is if a disease is occurring in animal population throughout the world, throughout the world, it is called panzootic. So zootic, jahabi term lag jaga, it comes for animal population, and demic means it comes for human population. That is the main difference between zootic and demic. And another term is endemic. So endemic is a disease condition in which in which uh, the organism or the infection is present constantly at a particular rate of occurrence in a population. Suppose we see uh, the our population is endemic for brucellosis. What does it mean? It means that we have a constant occurrence of a brucellosis in our population throughout the year. Say for example, it is 2%, 2% endemic in Bihar. If you see the brucellosis is endemic at the rate of 2% in our state, it means the cases of brucellosis is reported constantly for a long period of time at the rate of 2%. So if it becomes pand epidemic or episodic, so what it means, it means that the occurrence of brucellosis has increased suddenly beyond the level of endemicity. Suppose it was endemic at 2% and now the disease is occurring 8%, 10% or 15%. It means there is a sudden increase in the cases of a particular disease that, that is called epidemic. So initially the disease, if a disease, uh, sometimes it is, uh, it is beneficial for us also to have endemicity in our population. Suppose a disease in, is endemic in our population, it means it, it is giving a constant immune response to our body also. So having endemic in our population for some disease, which is not of that uh, much uh, uh, virulence in nature, pathogenic in nature is good for our health. But if it becomes pathogenic, more pathogenic, it is not good for our health. So the pandemic, epidemic and endemic, I think you all have uh, now clear that endemic is a condition where the disease is constantly present at a particular level. That is important. And if that particular level is crossed within a certain limit of time, in a sudden uh, episode, if you are finding more number of cases in a population, it is called epidemic and if it is occurring throughout the world in large number of case uh, population then it is called pandemic or panzootic is it clear to you i think so coming to the next uh, part of our uh, uh, this lecture that is the what is the objective behind the studying this course epidemiology how why we study epidemiology what is the importance of this course so the first and foremost thing for which we study is, uh, is uh, to determine the origin of a disease whose cause is known. That is important, whose cause is known. If you know the cause of a disease, 
then we have to know what is the origin of the disease where from it originated suppose there is a case of salmonellosis salmonellosis or any food borne outbreak and we find different symptoms we can diagnose that yes this is a due to uh, salmonella outbreak in a population but the problem is why it has originated where from it has originated that is important to know unless we know why it is originating where from it is originating we cannot go for its perfect control strategy the same example i am again giving you the very recent outbreak of uh, coronavirus disease that yes uh, after a, after a week or two week or a month we came to know that this outbreak has due to coronavirus but where from it has originated what is the origin of this disease how it is coming to the population how it is spreading into the population that is more important to know unless we know the origin of the disease or the root of transmission of the disease we cannot go for its control strategy that's why the origin to know the origin of a disease whose cause is known is very very important to control coronavirus i am saying because this is very recent and we can we can uh, we can simulate our thinking in that way very very easily the second important point is investigation and control of a disease whose cause is unknown or poorly understood it means what does it means there are certain disease whose cause are still unknown but if we know the epidemiology of that disease we can go for its control strategy there are many type many diseases which we do not know and before knowing the actual cause of the disease sometimes we know its epidemiology and we can go for its control strategy this again i am putting the same example covid because at the time when it was hitting the population in china what was happening there peoples they were not knowing the exact cause of the disease the peoples they are getting infection they are getting and they they get suffered and they were showing symptoms so based on the symptoms what the doctors they did they identified the person having the symptom of this disease they tried to treat them but it was not treatable and they are they were getting more and more number of such cases from a particular location so what they did they have they gone for its identification or differentiation of the disease condition from other disease say for example covid the symptoms are very very related to the normal flu influenza influenza viral jo hum log what we talk about the normal flu in the population the symptom is very very similar so before knowing the exact cause that this particular disease was caused by a covid corona virus mutation they know that this 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 disease is caused by something new in the population because it, it was not a common flu it was going beyond that uh, level common flu what we get we it get treated or it uh, the the patient get recovered within Three few days, three few days, four days, or depending upon the immune status of the population. But the doctor was seeing that time that no, this disease is something else than the flu, and the people they are not getting recovered after so many long treatment. Also, then they started investigating the exact cause of the disease, and they came to know that this disease is different from the flu virus, no common flu, and they came to know. the the exact cause of the disease so by that time aisa nahi hai ki wo chup baithe hue the during that gap they started controlling they started communicating to the people that there something new has happened in the population and it is spreading very fastly that that occurred only due to the epidemiology of that disease they were studying the epidemiology how it is moving into the population they they were studying and by the time they know the exact cause of the disease they were also knowing how it is spreading so immediately they have started the containment strategy and that's why the epidemiology is very very important i mean to communicate you that if we do not know even the exact cause of the disease and if we know the root of its transmission the way of its movement or the source of this disease we can go for 
a containment strategy or control strategy of that particular disease. That is the importance of epidemiology. So our, our objective is, second objective is to investigate and control the disease whose cause is unknown or it is poorly understood. Later on, we can have a detailed study of a disease, any disease, and we can know better way. That is different thing. But initially, if we do not know the exact cause, we can still have the epidemiology and we can go for its control strategy. That is the objective of epidemiology. The next is to acquisition of information on the ecology and nature of a uh, ecology and uh, uh, natural uh, I mean uh, host you can say uh, of a disease what is the uh, how it is occurring in the uh, population that that is also important just a minute please hmm. That is the natural history of a disease. So the, so the question came, what is the natural history of a disease? What do you understand by the natural history of a disease? So in anything, if you, if you uh, know the nature of a disease, natural history, it means what is the history of a disease to being in the population? So natural history, it depicts how it is interacting with the population, how it is, how a particular disease is interacting with the environment, how it is interacting with the host. And if we know the natural history, it, that means the disease is, is occurring in a particular group of population. Say for example, for a zoonotic disease, any, any zoonotic disease. If we know the natural history of a zoonotic disease, say for example, it is Q fever, just an example, Q fever. So Q fever, if we know that Q fever is a disease which is occurring usually in monkeys and it is getting transmitted to the human being through a vector. So that is the natural history of a disease. It means the Q fever uh, was occurring in some, some wild animal population and it is being transmitted through some vector. Then we can have a better control measure. Say for example, again, again, I am saying the COVID because this is a very typical condition, and we can put COVID everywhere. So COVID, by knowing the natural history of, still it is it is uh, going on that the the disease is uh, changing every time, every se second. It is very it is getting changed. The the natural history, the epidemiology of that disease is changing, but still. By knowing the natural history of, a, of the disease COVID-19 that it was uh, reported from a certain place in China, Wuhan, and it was, uh, it was said that this has originated from the wet market of a uh, wet wild market where the different types of wild animals, they are getting slaughtered and the, and the, uh, and the blood and the secretion, excretion of the different wild animals, they are getting mixed and human population, they are also exposed to the same condition. That may have led to the occurrence of a new virus in the population. And that's how it has spread. So if we know the natural history, and by knowing that natural history of that virus, we, can, uh, we, have, uh, we have closed that market. The China has closed that market that, so that we can further prevent the spread of that disease. So knowing natural history of a disease is very, very important as far as control of that disease is concerned. If we know, suppose, suppose say for example, the say very simple example of foot and mouth disease in a population. So if we know the foot, of mouth, the foot and mouth disease is occurring at a particular place in a particular time, time I am saying because this is important uh, for any infectious disease, temperature and environmental condition. Say, uh, uh, why it is occurring FMD or certain diseases occurring every time before rainy season or after the rainy season? Because it has some relation with the nature. It has some relation with the ecology, environment. If the environment permit them to grow fastly, multiply fastly and spread fastly, 
the epidemic of a disease occur in a population. It will not happen in, uh, in, in a population at a very low temperature or a very high temperature. Most of the infectious disease you will find, either it is a bacterial disease or a viral disease, you will find every disease is occurring at a particular period of time. That time is important because the animal population or human population, they are, when they are more stressed, the immune system of that host will be lower. They are reacting very less. And the infectious diseases, they get themselves expressed during those times only. So acquisition of information on the ecology and natural history of a disease is very, very important if you want to control it. Ecology, again, I am saying, what is ecology? Ecology is nothing but if it is, a, it is the study of ecosystem. Now the term is called ecosystem. What is ecosystem? Ecosystem, it is nothing. It is just you, you, you can say that the study of interaction of host, plant and agent. If it is occurring at a place, this is called the ecology. Yeah, sorry, ecosystem. So ecosystem is very, very important for infectious disease because we all know that, uh, the, that a bacteria or virus to spread within a population, it is not possible unless and until the environment favors it. If the environment start favoring its growth, it will start growing and spreading. And in the, main, in the same time, some vector, if it is vector bond disease, some vector comes into the role and they start spreading throughout the population very fastly. That's why the ecology and natural history of a disease is very, very important. Now, so uh, the next objective is planning, monitoring and assessment of disease control program that is also very important objective to study the epidemiology of a disease if we if you want to have some plan to control the disease we must know the epidemiology say for example uh, 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 monitoring uh, i'm coming to the point monitoring so uh, monitoring uh, if if you know what is monitoring what is surveillance you can go for its control strategy why we do monitoring of a disease why we uh, some sometimes say we are going for surveillance of a particular disease not monitoring so these are two different terminologies that are used to study disease pattern in a population monitoring is nothing it is simple observation of a population observation of a disease in a population what is happening in the population that is called monitoring so simple collection of data from a population is monitoring and surveillance is beyond monitoring means if we have a, a, a disease pattern if we have a data of population we can go for its analysis and depending upon the analysis we can go for its control strategy that is that is surveillance so surveillance and monitoring they are two different terminologies that are being used so monitoring is simple collection of data and surveillance is collection of data collation of data analysis of data and going for its control strategy during the surveillance we also come to know that uh, because surveillance is a long term study if we want to survey uh, if you want to have a surveillance data of a particular disease, we have to study for a long period of time. And during the study period, we can, we can come to know that this disease is spreading in what direction? What are the other species getting involved in the transmission of disease? That is, that is the achievement of surveillance. By studying monetary, simply you cannot get these data that uh, it is being transmitted. Like for example, COVID, you might have heard about the COVID it has been it is now reporting it is now being reported from other animal species like cats like uh, somebody has uh, shared me the link that is reported from uh, tigers also so now it is changing now it has changed its its uh, mode also it is being reported from animal species so it is more dangerous because the genosis is coming into the play 
and uh, animals they are also getting involved in the spread of this virus so by regular studying collecting the data it's an analyzing the data from different sources this is called surveillance so in order to control a disease you know the uh, is important to know the amount of a disease in a population so whether we have to go for a control strategy for a particular disease or not it depends upon the amount of disease in a population suppose we have a prevalence of 0.01% of a particular disease in a population it means that is not going to affect a large number of population particularly in case of i'm talking in, in in reference to animal population okay for human population they have they have different impact so say for example there is a uh, if if mastitis is occurring in 0.1% of population in animal population it means it's not it is not going to affect a large number of population so impact will not be of that much uh, tone so we can uh, we can postpone the control strategy of a particular disease but see if, say for example fmd so fmd is a disease in which a large number of population they are getting affected that's why if it is affecting a large number of population we have to go for its control strategy that can only be known by studying the epidemiology if the if the amount of a disease in a population is very high we have to go for its control strategy immediately and if the amount of a disease in a particular population is very low we can avoid it say for example the government of bihar is going for vaccination strategy against brucellosis in the state or government of india they have launched a program for control of brucellosis throughout the country in animal population it means that one thing is that brucellosis is an important genosis that is also uh, that is also playing part for the control strategy in human in animal population and another view is that the occurrence of or the prevalence of brucellosis in animal population is very very high say for example it is 8% or 10% or around this it means there is a need to control this disease in animal population so that we can have uh, less economic impact in animal population in animal productivity and also we have to check the infection in human population because uh, brucellosis is a typical type of zoonosis which spreads from animal to human so there is only one way till date because we do not have vaccine for human population so the only one option left out is we have to control the disease brucellosis in in animals so that we can have control the disease in human population that is the two aspect of brucellosis program so i am saying it is an example what i am trying to communicate is that the amount of disease is very important as far as planning for control strategy is concerned okay another uh, factor is the factor associated with its occurrence so planning monitoring and assessment of disease it helps in the understanding of factors associated with the occurrence of a particular disease again i am saying the example of corona virus covid 2 because this is a new disease so if we know the factor associated with the occurrence of covid we can go for better control strategy what what we have learned in this disease government they are knowing that yes contact is the major factor which is going to be uh, which is playing important role in the spread of this disease so what will be our planning what the government is planning they have to stop the transmission that's why the social distancing and lockdown they all come into play that if we uh, maintain the population in isolation which is the major factor for the spread of this virus we can check the disease that is the importance of epidemiology so people scientists they they came to know that it is transmitted through contact directly con direct contact or through aerosol route if we 
cough or a sneeze in a in a gathering it will spread to different population so that is the importance of studying uh, importance of the factor associated with the occurrence of disease we know the factor we can go for its control strategy we can plan for its control strategy the other point is the facilities required to control the disease okay so if we want to control or eradicate any disease in a population we must know what facilities is required unless we know the facilities required we cannot go for its uh, for planning of control of particular disease again i am supporting the same example covid so we know that this is a highly pathogenic virus and it needs to be handled in a particular by safety level condition say for example we have to handle this virus in bsl3 condition so if we know that this virus required such condition we have to generate the facilities unless we generate the facilities we cannot go for its control planning okay so if we have a bsl3 laboratory we can collect the sample and go for its diagnosis that is the importance of knowing the facilities which is required for the control of a disease and in 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 case of animal population the cost and benefit ratio it is always suggested that it, if it is a better option uh, to adopt a control strategy if it is costing less if a vaccine cost 1000 rupees it doesn't mean to uh, plan for such vaccine because the cost is not up to the uh, it's not uh, uh, in the is not coming in the in the in the aspect of cost benefit ratio always the cost benefit ratio should be low it means any control strategy that we plan it should have a minimum cost what is happening in covid initially we have uh, we had a, a diagnostic kit that was costing 4000 5000 so it was not possible to screen all the population unless we have a, a, a test kit of lower value now it is available in 500 600 rupees so we can go for more and more number of cases uh, getting tested so always we have to keep in view the cost of the uh, whatever planning we are uh, thinking we always think for its cost uh so another uh, objective of starting up a demology is the assessment of economic effect of a disease that we have discussed earlier also if we, it is economically good we can go for its control strategy otherwise we can stop it but this we cannot say for any uh zoonotic disease this 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 particular uh, is uh, in relevance to the animal production itself if it is of if any disease is of highly genotic in nature we cannot uh, stick to this statement that is assessment of economic effect of a disease because human life cannot be just with economic we have to save the human life so this specially it refers to human population only sorry animal population only not for the human beings uh analysis of the cost and economic benefit we have already uh, discussed it uh, another uh, slide is uh, yes so coming to different types of epidemiology what are the uh, different epidemiological investigation so we can uh, uh, divide epidemiology into different categories four categories and the first one is uh, we can say descriptive epidemiology second one is analytical epidemiology third is experimental epidemiology and the fourth is theoretical epidemiology they are different types of epidemiology that has uh, that are being used for a particular mm -hmm. disease study say what is descriptive epidemiology so descriptive epidemiology as the terms uh, 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 says it is a type of uh, description so nothing more detail is noted so it is simply observing and recording the disease and possible causal factors 
that is the simple knowing or simple recording of the data from a population that is called descriptive epidemiology nothing we are going to have you can say simply it is a monitoring type of work that uh, population is getting involved with a certain disease so we can record that yes this is animal is disease this animal is disease this animal is disease likewise we can have a uh, database that uh, a particular population is being affected with a particular type of disease that is simply descriptive epidemiology now analytical epidemiology comes so analytical as we all know it, it is derived from analysis so whatever observation you have recorded in descriptive and epidemiology we have to analyze it with the help of a suitable tool so what are those tools they can be a statistical test they can be of diagnostic test say for example again i am putting the same example covid 19 initially it was not possible to diagnose this unknown disease so people they were simply uh, observing the disease condition in the population later on they were able to diagnose this disease with a diagnostic test now it is called analytical epidemiology so in analytical epidemiology epidemiology we analyze the data based on a valid diagnostic test and using a statistical test whether this is going to affect large number of population or not that is also important so analytical epidemiology is analysis of observation using suitable diagnostic and statistical test for a disease that is called analytical epidemiology next is experimental epidemiology so uh, as soon as the experiment come into play it means two things we have we have to have two groups of animal or two groups of population one is being exposed to a certain disease condition and another is control so if we compare the symptoms between exposed group and controlled group we can have a certain uh, data generated so based on those data we can compare that in exposed population this disease is occurring at this level of incidence or at this level of virulence so it is more important it, what i mean to say that experimental epidemiology it observe and analyzes the data from different group of animals from which we can select and in which we can alter the factors so experimental epidemiology it always come into play when two experimental groups are involved in which we can add the risk factors we can alter the risk factor and generate the data to analyze the disease that is experimental epidemiology experiment means we need to have a, a controlled group on which we can add or delete the factors so that is called epidemiological sorry experimental epidemiology the next is theoretical epidemiology so this is nothing but this is representation of the disease using mathematical models which simulate the natural pattern of disease occurrence in the population what is ha happening in covid again i am saying this same example the who or cdc they have given a, a chart based on mathematical model which simulates the natural pattern of occurrence of a disease in the population they are saying that after getting infection it will take 14 days and within 14 days the incubation period is over and it will start showing the symptom so you might have seen the curve of the disease of this disease in the population that every get, country is getting the curve elevated after 14 days or 15 days and so on so that is the theoretical epidemiology it means they are using the mathematical data mathematical models using the data of a disease 
and it simulate the natural pattern of disease occurrence in the population that is called theoretical epidemiology so what we are doing in covid we are going for theoretical epidemiology based on the data we try to simulate the disease occurrence in the population and based on this simulation we are going for its control strategy because we cannot go for experiment of such type of disease so only way we have left is we can go for mathematical modeling and go for its control strategy okay so that is the uh, theoretical epidemiology now uh, there are some uh, some uh, sub disciplines of epidemiology that has come into role now like uh, uh, it is not uh, different entirely fundamentally it is the same thing as we have uh, uh, classified earlier theoretical or analytical or mathematical whatsoever is there it is the basically the same thing but it implies in different relevance like the first is clinical epidemiology so as uh, we are seeing clinical it means it has some relevance to the clinical setup of a disease so clinical epidemiology is the use of epidemiological principles methods and findings in the care of individual or in the care of animal with with particular reference to diagnosis and prognosis so what is happening in clinics a clinician is not uh, going to collect uh, uh, data from the field whatever animal it is reported in the clinics and based on those reported cases the clinician say that this particular disease is reported in a particular period of time say for example they may say some clinician may say that uh, that uh, rinder paste is or rotavirus is being reported more in a particular age group of canines and they are giving some treatment they are using some validated uh, validated test also to diagnose the disease condition and they are prescribing some therapeutic uh, measures also so based on those experience of the clinic clinicians we can have certain idea about the epidemiology of a disease that yes that this disease this uh, uh, parvo uh, parvovirus uh, rotavirus is being reported more in in a group of pets having age less than 2 month and this test we are using for its diagnosis and this therapy is responsing is giving better response so based on their experience of disease reporting its diagnosis and its treatment they have a different they can give a, clin, a clinical epidemiology picture that this disease is occurring more in such age group of population and it is being treated by using this drug so that is the clinical epidemiology it is very important for initial treatment of a disease in clinical setup another is computational epidemiology that uh, you might have uh, get some idea that computational means it has to play some role of mathematical models computer science yes it involves the application of computer sciences to epidemiological study that is includes representation of disease by mathematical models as we have discussed mathematical model with the help of different mathematical models we can uh, we can analyze the data of a disease and we can go for uh, disease uh, control strategy so that is computational epidemiology with the help of computer we can analyze the data and we can have uh, different control strategy now another term is used is genetic epidemiology genetic epidemiology is nothing it is uh, simply the genetics come into role what does it mean it means what is the relevance of a particular gene pool in the distribution of a particular disease say for example if an uh, if there is some inherited defect in a particular population and that defected population is getting more disease that means the genetics or the genes are responsible for the occurrence of a particular disease 
that is a genetic epidemiology it is very uh, uh, less common in 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 animal epidemiology uh, it is more important as far as uh, in human population so in humans there are certain disease uh, condition which are uh, more in a genetically uh, altered population so it is not of much importance for animal uh, population another is field epidemiology field epidemiology is nothing what we do in field epidemiology whatever disease is occurring in a field condition this is being only reported by a person in the field if you are a veterinarian you are working in field condition mm -hmm. you are knowing the occurrence of disease at the ground level and you have to decide you have to take judgment whether we can we have to go for its control strategy immediately or not so that is called the field epidemiology the involvement of field veterinarians or the field working personnel they are very very important for its response every time it is not possible to have a response from the higher authority the field workers they are important for control of such diseases so that is called field epidemiology it is nothing new the same thing we are we are referring in different relevance that's all say participatory epidemiology participatory as, as we all know participation means we have to take the help of local personals in the field condition say for example uh, 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 a country like india or a country which is uh, under developing so they do not have uh, a good knowledge of the disease at ground level they do not have better communication uh, facility at ground level so what is the strategy for what is our strategy to go for its control because our main aim is to maintain animal health so what we do we can have a participatory type of study we can call the people from a particular village we can ask them some question we can ask their problem and based on their problems we can give some suggestion to the public or we can give a control strategy to be adopted by the government this is participatory epidemiology with the help of local knowledge we can gain the information i mean to say at the village level among the poor people who are not having much information we can gather the in information with the help of participatory meeting we can call a meeting of the people at panchayat level and we can gather the information take the inputs analyze it and give them suggestion that is the participatory epidemiology that is very very important for control of uh, uh, con developing control strategy of uh, many many diseases now molecular epidemiology so uh, molecular epidemiology is nothing new as the science grows the newer techniques they are playing a role in the in studying the epidemiology of a disease so by knowing new biochemical techniques the microbiologist or the virologist or molecular biologist they are studying the small genetic changes small antigenic changes among the viruses or bacteria or whatsoever it is and with the help of these small changes study we can predict the occurrence of disease in the population so what i mean to say that initially we were we uh, how we were identify or diagnosing the disease initially we used to go for its uh, isolation in case of bacteria we have to isolate we have to go for its uh, biochemical testing we have to go for its uh, uh, serotyping of bacteria like that but we cannot go for its differentiation at small or minute level genetic level you cannot differentiate with the help of those techniques but with the with the involvement of biotechnology molecular biology now we can study the small small changes at genetic level 
and we can study the difference in the antigenic structure of the particular virus or bacteria. The same example I'm again putting COVID-19 or coronavirus because it is not, not a new virus. Coronavirus, it, the outbreak also occurred during 2003 or 4 in the same place, China, coronavirus. And this COVID is again the mutated form of that, say, of, of that coronavirus. It means if we do not have a high thoroughfoot diagnostic tool, we cannot go for its analysis. How it was diagnosed, this COVID-19? It was diagnosed with the help of new generation sequencing technique. The scientists, they have sequenced the whole gene of that virus. And after sequencing, they have they gone for its hybridization. So after hybridization, uh, I mean, uh, after blasting of that sequence, they came to know that this is related to coronavirus, but they have a large number of mutation and that mutation resulted into the widespread pathogenicity of this virus. That is molecular epidemiology, means use of molecular tools and techniques for the study of epidemiology of a disease it is called molecular epidemiology. Like we are taking the help of PCR, we are taking help of hybridization technique, we are taking help of DNA fingerprinting, we are taking help of protein mapping study, we are taking help of new generation sequencing based diagnosis. This is the best method to diagnose any disease. Sequencing is the ultimate tool nowadays after this tool, there is not even a single test available beyond this test. If you sequence the genome of a particular agent, we can have a, a confirmatory diagnosis for a particular disease. That is the power of molecular biology in the current situation, current scenario. That's why the molecular epidemiology, they are putting a very, very important role in the, studying, in the study of a disease. And also it has a it has it is playing role in the control of disease because with the help of molecular techniques tools uh, like bioinformatic tools we can design in vitro model of this drug and after designing in vitro model we can go for in vivo testing of the drug and we can go for its control strategy. That is the power of uh, new techniques, molecular techniques in the understanding of epidemiology of the disease. So I think that is all about the two, today's lecture. So thank you all for listening. If you thank have you. any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. If you have any question, you can ask. Thank you, sir. So, what is protein mapping? Yes, ah, protein mapping. Okay. So, you know the central dogma of uh, molecular biology? It means, yes, sir. Uh, from DNA, the organism leads to mRNA. From mRNA, it will produce the protein. So ultimately, it is the protein which is responsible for causing a disease condition. Or if we if we know the protein structure of a particular DNA, because after all, DNA results into protein. So if we know the protein structure, we can go for its contra protein production, like antibody production. So antibody is nothing but it is anti-protein molecule. Suppose the virus or the bacteria is having a protein on its surface, our body respond against that protein. So mapping of protein means you, you mapping of protein means the knowing the structure of that protein. Mapping means to uh, know the structure, detailed structure of that protein. That is called protein mapping. It is nothing. We have to know the exact structure, threefold structure 
of that protein then only we can design a model protein model jaise aapne suna hoga covid 19 ke liye the scientists they are trying artificially they are knowing the dna sequence of that virus so they can they can uh, simulate the rna sequence based on dna uh, so sorry covid is a rna virus so they are they are knowing the rna of that sequence rna sequence unko pata hai so based on that rna sequence they can predict what are the pro possible proteins are there and if we know the possible proteins they can go for its prevention they may design certain drugs which interact with or which block those proteins and if they are able to do so if we, if they are able to block those responsible proteins the virus can be removed from the population because virus binds to a certain receptor any organism any pathogen it's it binds to certain receptor in the host and if we block those receptor or if we block those uh, antigenic epitopes of the pathogen we can stop the interaction of host and agent that's why we can control the disease that is protein mapping protein mapping is simply the knowing the detailed structure of a protein so on NGS computer in gs it is a new technique new generation sequencing it is just sequencing of dna ngs is a technique where we can get the sequence of a particular pathogen particular gene so ngs is uh, initially the sequencing technique was there that you aapne padha hoga sanger sequencing so in sanger sequencing one by one the sequence get added the demerit of sanger sequencing was that you need to know the sequence of that particular gene then only uh, in that is the, it, it was based on primer so if we have a primer of a gene it will sequence ngs is entirely different technique if you put the sample into the machine it will give you the sequence match it with the sequence available on the database and identify the organism that is the power of new generation sequencing so they are using various different types of algorithm available and based on those algorithms it generates a sequence so it helps in identification of new pathogens and covid was known because of ngs agar ngs nahi hota it was very difficult to identify the virus ngs hone ke karan they put the sample into the ngs machine and that machine they have generated the sequence sequence ek bar aa gaya they have get it blasted into the database database mein unhone dala then it has come analyzed the data and came to know that this sequence or particular virus is related to corona virus with certain mutation in the sequence that's why they told it as covid 2 corona virus disease 2 it is different from the initial corona virus <laughs> ठीक है ना सो एन जी एस इज नथिंग द फुल फॉर्म इज न्यू जेनरेशन सिक्वेंसिंग इट इज अ टेक्निक टू सिक्वेंस द डी एन ए और आर एन एफ ए सैम्पल ज्यादा डिटेल यू कैन गेट इट फ्रॉम अजीत सर टेक्नोलॉजी में ठीक है thank you sir okay thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir 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 ये जिस 